Has anyone seen any naughty pumpkins about? That's right, in this video for Halloween, I am letting my cats pick what I read dressed as pumpkins, which they are so happy about. <laughs> Pumpkins. I love Halloween. So I've done this before where I put treats on three different books and whichever book they read, they, they read. <laughs> My cat's like, oh. <laughs> whichever book they eat the treat from, I have to read. But they're dressed up as pumpkins for an extra Halloween twist. So I've got three different rounds. I've got a fantasy round, a horror round, and a mystery round, all with books in that I feel like fit the Halloween-y vibe. So let's just get into it and see what the first cat chose. <laughs> so Lux is up first choosing for fantasy and the options I gave him were Her Majesty's Royal Coven by Juno Dawson, Gallant by V.E. Schwab and Belladonna by Adeline Grace. Whoa. <laughs> you had this on the other day and you didn't <laughs> He's like, he's like stepped out of it. After many attempts, we finally got him in the pumpkin outfit. And look how cute he looks. He's so cute. So let's see what he picks. Which one shall I read? Do you want treaties? Which one do you want? Which one do you want? Oh, I think it was a purple <laughs> pick. I really love treats. Thank you. Maybe you didn't like those ones. You didn't like the yellow ones either. Come here. Guys, what's this? Which one? You had to see him, you had to see him poured out. There we mm. go! He loves the purple book! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> go, Luxie! I'll read that then. Great pick! Great pick, Lux! <laughs> Whoa! Are you happy with us, Lux? Do you still like us? Do you still like us? No. <laughs> So Lux chose Belladonna by Adeline Grace, one that I am so excited to read. I got this gorgeous edition in Fairy Loot very recently and I was like, hang on. Um, I might have to read that straight away. <laughs> I have used up every bit of my patience. I think I unboxed this in my 24 hour reading vlog and I was like, do I just like shut the rest of the vlog down and just read this? But I didn't, but now I'm gonna be reading it, which I'm so glad about. I don't know too much about it. I think we're following an orphan who falls in love with death itself. I don't know, but I've never read anything from Adeline Grace, but I've always been intrigued by her stuff. I've always liked her kind of vibe and synopses. So very excited. I feel like Lux picked very well. I feel like this is gonna be pretty accessible to read, nice big font, <laughs> and it fits like this gothic dark vibe. I feel like it's perfect. I'm like going to be looking for some good Spotify playlists <laughs> for this book to like fit the vibe. So next up was Miko with horror and I gave him The Weight of Blood by Tiffany D. Jackson, The Hacienda by Isabella Caness, and The Rest of Stark by Erica Waters. You're me? <laughs> you like cameras usually. <laughs> Do I? Okay. Should we make you a pumpkin? <laughs> You're a pumpkin boy you are. Still. Whoa, you're the pumpkin kid. <laughs> oh my goodness. What a pumpkin boy he is. <laughs> Do you like <laughs> Come on. Vika. <gasps> For treats. All <laughs> <laughs> oh, these treats in that one. This has been a difficult video to film. <laughs> and they're not caught by cats. <laughs> Some cats you see wearing Halloween outfits and they love them. Yeah, I like that model, the model cat that struts down the runway. These? Right no. No, he's a, he's a slinky malinky. <laughs> and you're really eating treats off of that book, <laughs> Then Miko chose The Hacienda by Isabel Caness. I think it's funny I'm reading this before I read Mexican Gothic, which this has been like pitched as. <laughs> I think our main protagonist's family has suffered some economic difficulties and so she marries this man. There's rumors about his first wife that she ignores. I've heard it's Rebecca meets a uh, Mexican Gothic, which are two books that have been on my TBR for probably the longest and haven't read them. So I'm just reading an amalgamation of them instead. I know there's a priest in this. 
and it's the priest maybe you know i've heard <laughs> i've heard some things <laughs> we thank jesus in advance for his healing amen but yeah i've heard a lot of good things about this and i feel like again this is kind of the gothic horror that I'm really into at the moment. I really love this kind of horror that isn't like gory necessarily, but is eerie, creepy, claustrophobic. So yes, very excited for this one. And then finally was Rora with Mystery and I gave her The Three Dahlias by Katie Watson, The Twyford Code by Janice Hallett and The It Girl by Ruth Ware. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready to be a pumpkin? <laughs> I love pumpkins. <laughs> Hello, queen on your throne. Are you ready to pick a book for me to read? She's gonna kill you. She's gonna lacerate. Uh oh. <laughs> I'm in danger. <laughs> Good girl. Alright, hold still. <laughs> They're good at going backwards, aren't they? They are, they're like, scoop! My <laughs> <laughs> hands can't move quick enough. <laughs> I like the other cats who then run away. She just goes back for more. <laughs> right, stay here. Stay here, you. <laughs> okay. Oh, Rora. Wow, Rora. Look at you. It's difficult to go that way. <laughs> You're looking so great. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's because he's shoveling them in. <laughs> what are these? Mmm, interesting. <sighs> <laughs> no, she's realised she's got the pumpkin on her. <laughs> Which are the treats? Oh, this is a fair. This is a fair thing now because it's not oh. like I put it in front of her. So I don't <laughs> she it. doesn't Ooh. like the pumpkin. <laughs> What's this? Which one are you going to choose? Oh look, there's treats. Oh, she's going for the I... middle. She's <laughs> going for the middle. Now we've got to pick a book. No, you've got to pick a book. You've got to eat one off a book, Rora. <laughs> <laughs> it's raining treats. <laughs> Have you eaten one off a book yet? No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> she knows how to trick us. <laughs> She's like, I won't be part of your game. <laughs> you gotta choose one. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's so annoying. Oh. Oh, <laughs> she oh the... she's so sneaky. Oh no, here we go. Oh! Oh yeah! yeah. <laughs> That's one I wanted to Did we really. clap for you? We did, didn't we? Look at you, little Miss Pumpkin. <laughs> oh, you're such a pumpkin. I can't believe she's putting up with it. She just wants treats so bad. <laughs> she's, a, she's the greediest cat that's ever lived. Can we get an every treat? Yeah, but now books? she eats them off the books. Oh, you're real crunching it, aren't you? Oh, God, she <laughs> loves books. Whenever this cat sees books, she knows she's getting fed. Do you like being a pumpkin? <laughs> oh, shit, I got you with the mic. And then Rora tried her best not to choose a book. She was like, this is beneath me. I'm just <laughs> not gonna choose one. But in the end, she chose The Three Dahlias by Katie Watson. Yes, I know I've still got the price sticker on. It's just really hard to get it off because it's like on a, this book is in a um, sleeve. I am really excited for this. This is a murder mystery, definitely paying homage to Agatha Christie. There's like a famous character that a author wrote, a famous um, detective called Dahlia Lively. And we're following three uh, actresses who have played that character in different generations, coming together to solve a murder mystery at the author's family estate home. Listen, we've got references to Agatha Christie. We've got a stately home murder. We've got like unlikely duo of detectives. I think this is a series, I've only just realized it, but look at this, look at what we get. I showed this in another video, but look. We get a cast of characters, we get a ground floor map, we get a first floor map, we get a second floor map, and we get a grounds map. That suggests to me it's going to be very like based on clues and figuring stuff out and really giving you the information to like figure out the mystery. I think this is going to be a really fun book to read for me because I think it's definitely going to be like 
you know, lending itself to me trying to solve it a little bit. So those are the books I'm going to be reading in this vlog. I'm really, really excited to get into all of them. I think I'm going to read them in the order that they were chosen. So let's start with Belladonna, get straight into the gothic vibes. And yeah, I'm really excited. So I'm only a hundred pages into Belladonna. I was like hoping to finish this whole book today. Um, probably not gonna happen. I'm still, I still wanna get quite a bit away through it, but like, it's, it's taking me a long time to get into it. You gotta do me a favor. Anything. You can't say a word. I don't know how I feel about this yet, essentially. Let me tell you the plot and then we'll talk about it. <laughs> so in this, what is her name? Girl, I thought her name was gonna be Belladonna. No, Signa. Her name's Signa. And she was orphaned as a baby and death could not come to get her. She was supposed to be poisoned by her mother's milk. <laughs> I don't know why that sounds, okay, whatever. No, it's a natural, natural. We love women, we love mothers. Anyways, um, <laughs> death couldn't touch her and it becomes clear she can't die. The bitch can't die. Break her neck, fine. Poison? Fine, you can't touch me, is basically what she's saying. She is now trying to like meet with death. She keeps trying to summon death and she keeps getting passed around um, many different like, what's the word? Guardians, I guess, they all keep dying. <laughs> she, through a chain of events, ends up in this old house with these, her last remaining relatives. She's burned through them all. <laughs> Where the mother, has recently died and the daughter is very ill. And um, that's basically what we know so far. She's like, try and get to know death, trying to understand what of death's powers she has. And she's at this home with her family. And I just haven't gotten into it yet. And it's making me sad. Like I'm actually, I'm feeling really upset. I'm not disliking it. I just haven't made up how I feel about it yet. The writing has these moments of like gorgeous lyrical writing that I should love. I mean, it's definitely YA. It's definitely YA vibes. Like, is she gonna fall in love with death or with the stable boy? That's what we, that's what's going on here. You know what I mean? And it's like, I guess a YA version of, you know, writing that I love, like Erin Morganson, for example. You know, she's probably my favorite writer in terms of language. And it's like that, but like YA. It's like that, but like not quite there. And so I should love it. And like, I'm loving the gothic vibes, but I'm just not caring about picking it up. Sue me. Like, <laughs> I don't know. 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 I mean, look at them. I should love this. I love the gothic vibes. So yeah, I'm hoping it's just a case of I haven't fully gotten into it yet. I've got reading sprints with my patrons and like, what is the extra time? Uh, about an hour. About reading sprints in about an hour with my patrons. So I'm hoping to read at least like another 150 pages tonight is the goal. We shall see how well I do with that. <laughs> but um, yeah, I love a haunted house book. There's obviously spirits in this. You can see spirits. I love a haunted house book, but a haunted house book that kind of I prefer the intrigue of like leaves you on edge as to like our ghost real or whatever or her knowing death. Like I feel like they're busy mates already. They're not, but like he's been there a lot and we've heard a lot from him and I feel like the mystery isn't there either. So I'm like, what is intriguing me other than finding out maybe how her, it's not her aunt, I don't know, the mother of the family died is maybe it. So anyways, I'm gonna go read some more and hopefully once I get to page like 250, we will be having more success.
So, can you, like, adjust, adjust the light? Come on. I know you can do it. No, we're going orange today. Girl, look how orange you look, girl. Ugh, I guess I'll turn the overhead lights on even though I hate them. Ah! Oh my god, it's like burning my retinas. Anyway, <laughs> so I just finished my reading sprints with my patrons. And, um, yeah. <laughs> so I'm on page two. Whoa, whoa, it's late. I'm tired. I'm on page 250. So I don't have too much left to read. I have like 150 pages left to read. So here's the thing, right? There's a love triangle in this. I mean, not a love triangle. We've gone over this many times. Love triangles aren't love triangles because the line at the end is not connected. So it's a love 10. <laughs> I don't know, what's that shape? Yeah, there's a love triangle and it's between death and a stable boy. Is that a competition? Like, are this like, sh like, mm, nah. There's no way I'm gonna play fair. No way. Is it a competition? Is it a competition? Is it a, co I'm not sure it is. Death, death is a fairly frequent character in this. He pops up, he says hello. He's not mean, but he's not, like, he, he has a strange character. He's kind of, like, kind to her always and soft and gentle. But it's just, like, not fully committing to the bit. Do you know what I mean? That's my biggest issue with this. I'm not loving it. My biggest issue with this is that it feels like I love the synopsis. I love the vibes. I love the premise. But it's all vibes. <sighs> it's, like, it's all vibes. Do you get what I mean? It, we're just vibing here. It's so here's the thing: if you love fantasy with romance in it, that's heavy on the autumnal, spooky, gothic vibes. Read this. Read it. Read it. So the first hundred pages, there's not really any intrigue. There's nothing moving the story along. The mystery began at page like 103 or something, and it's to do with um the woman, the mum who died. Was she murdered? Is her daughter, who is now in the same way being poisoned in the same way uh, uh, you know that's the the vague synopsis of it and i'm pretty sure i already know who our culprit is i well, i mean we'll see if that turns out to be true but i'm pretty sure i already know who the culprit is and i'm just like not loving it it's a series as well and i just like unless the ending is amazing i've got to be strict with my series continuations like <laughs> we're in the trenches over here on finishing series so I don't know if I'm going to continue this series. I don't know. We'll finish it in the morning. I have more reading sprints tomorrow, actually, in my patrons, because tonight's were um, replacing some that I missed last week. So we will finish this tomorrow, and we'll move on to our next book, because <laughs> Lux, I hate to tell you, but I'm not loving it. I just got off more sprints for my patrons, and I finished Belladonna. I'm going to give it 2.5 stars. <laughs> I just really don't know how much more I can take. I have taken the brunt of so much. Listen, I'm quite sad about it, okay? I'm quite upset because I wanted to love this so much. I just think I was like wanting a mystery. It promised me a mystery and instead we got like this love triangle. I don't know, the writing just wasn't for me. I've never read anything about Adeline Grace before and I heard uh, people who read her first book didn't love the writing. It just like, for me, writing is number one, right? I've talked about this before. People prioritize writing, plot or characters and they like, everyone ranks those in a different way. Writing for me is so 100, so top. Like I have to love and vibe with the writing. I can't get past like loving the characters or loving the plot if I don't love the writing and I just, the writing didn't work for me, personally. But I'm sure other people will love this. It's very gothic. It's very vibes, vibes, vibes. Like, it's heavy on the vibes. If you're an aesthetic girly, <laughs> can you might like it. No, no shade. Um. No, no, no shade. You know, if you like romances, if you like love triangles, I think you would like it. I just don't think it's really a book for me, is essentially the problem. There was a twist nearer the end that I thought, oh, that's good. That, whew, that is good. Miss Adeline Grace slayed a little bit there. She did slay a little bit there. She had me in the palm of her hand and she slayed a bit there. And it, I thought about giving it a three, but for that, at that point, like it had been a 2.5 in my mind for so long. And by the time like I got to, it was like got past the twist, I was like, okay, yeah, this is still 2.5. Like, <laughs> you know, it reminded me of like dual timelines, right? I don't like when books, yeah, I would rather read a romance. I would rather, I don't think I really like fantasy romance. I would rather read a romance, right? 
just a whole romance because this is half romance half mystery essentially with like a fantastical twist to it but it's half romance half mystery and as much as I say oh I love books that are like 30% historical 30% fantasy 30% mystery right but that's more like vibes I feel like you can be all of those things at once right but this was half about the romance half about the mystery and I feel like neither of those were compelling enough to stand on their own it's the same with dual timelines what I often don't like them is because I feel like neither of the timelines are compelling enough to stand on their own and that's why they're put together I didn't feel like the mystery was compelling enough to stand on its own and I didn't feel like the romance was compelling enough to stand on its own two halves don't make a whole in reading for me but um I will not be continuing on with a series because it's a series so at least we must be grateful for small mercies because it means like, it doesn't add to my my series total so first book down Lux did not choose well for me he went for vibes over <laughs> <laughs> writing substance that I like. No, substance is not the right word. But, you know, I didn't love it. Didn't love it. But let's just go ahead and get into our next book. So I haven't really got far into the Hacienda yet. I have no thoughts. But I just realised whilst I was on my sprints, my fairy loot of the month arrived. And I thought let's unbox it right now. I actually can't, I can't wait to open it. So this is the October box. Yes, Belladonna was my last fairy loot bag. <laughs> we are going to pretend we didn't hear that. But I will say the lovely fairy loot, like, you know, the design on the hardcover, the end pages made it a much more enjoyable reading experience than it would have been without it. And Fairy Luke can't control how much I love the book. They can just send me gorgeous stuff. <laughs> I feel like I really needed this today. I can't wait to see what we have. Okay. Oh, we have more socks. I love, I, I always say I love getting socks because I always need more socks. So these are Capes Water socks inspired by the Raven Cycle, but those are cute. I actually feel like these could be look really cute with some kind of, if you're trying to like a woodland, woodland nymph, I feel like the kind of tree. <laughs> Socks could look cute, so love that. Oh my god, we have another one of these! So this is a canvas basket. This one inspired by Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. That is useful. I use my other one. Can you see it there? That's what I put my like immediate TBR in. So the next few books I have to read for videos, that's what they go in. So I've got another one, which is good because I have like a bajillion books planned to read for the next couple months that I can put in here. I like using these to separate out like the immediate TBR I have versus my whole TBR, which goes in my TBR card. Oh, we have a paperback, Princess of Souls. Cute, look at that cover and the sprayed edges. It's a Rapunzel inspired romantic fantasy. It comes with a redesigned cover, sprayed edges and a digital signature. Oh my God, I like that. The green and the orange, what a vibe. And we have a house Moving Castle foiled art print. Let's see what the book of the month is. I love seeing Frodo editions. Oh my God, she's very blue. <laughs> oh my God, Jesus Christ. Check out the bless me. <laughs> Okay, one dark window. What is this? A goth, another gothic fantasy. Listen, they said we're gonna spoil the gothic fantasy girl. <laughs> Set in, that's the tongue twister, Mist Locked Kingdom with a tarot inspired magic system that we could not get enough of. So we have the cover. Get, okay, uh, okay, okay, let's talk about this slowly. <laughs> so we have a very mysterious design on the hardcover. We have a design on the back of the dust jacket and we have the end pages i mean we have four we have sprayed edges as well but the end pages oh my god i love this i love them doing designs in the end pages it makes me so happy cute oh my god i love the vibes of this cover that sounds so good wow i'm so excited to read this i will leave fairy loot link down below you should definitely go check them out if you've ever thought about it Okay, I'm gonna move from one gothic book to, I think the Hacienda is a gothic book. So I'll check in with you in a little bit. I think I'm gonna, have, gonna go out for a walk now actually, a nice autumnal walk. And I will check in with you in a little bit once I've read more of the Hacienda.
But look, it's your friend, the camera. Whoa, I'm reading the book you chose, Meeks. Miko does not like cuddles. <laughs> Get out of me! Good morning, everyone. This is like a strange angle. I, I've literally woken up like 10 minutes ago. <laughs> I'm not really awake yet, but I got halfway through this last night and I was too tired then to check in with you. And I wanna listen to more of the audiobook as I get ready. So we must, we must chat now. <laughs> I'm halfway through The Hacienda by Isabel Cañas and I'm really enjoying it. It doesn't feel like a five star, I will just say that, but it feels like the kind of book I can just enjoy and really enjoy the reading experience of it and know that it's not gonna be a five star, but it might be, but I'm just enjoying the experience. So basically, a few moments later, my mum came downstairs, so I had to kick Tom out of bed so I could film up here. <laughs> I'm halfway through the Hacienda. I told you that. The synopsis. The Mexican government was overthrown and her father was deworded. And so her mum and her were thrown into this really like precarious situation. And she has married this guy um, at this house, who owns this house, for stability. Because that's basically what her only choice was. And she gets to the house and he quickly leaves and becomes clear that it's haunted perhaps by his ex-wife. He has a wife who we think, we don't really know, think died. Oh no, we do know she died, she died. I think they said that she died of typhus, but like, mm, the fact that she's so angry <laughs> makes me think, mm, I meant something else. <laughs> Interesting. So it is like a Rebecca-esque story where she's being haunted by the ex-wife. I will say, this is some of the best, like, haunting I've seen. I feel like the haunted the haunted house books I often read are like YA, whereas because this is adult, it can really go there. It's scary. It's scarier than I thought it was gonna be. I don't know, I've been listening a lot to the audiobook and I feel like when you're listening to it, you can kind of like be a bit separated from it. But like there's some, there's some, there's some scary stuff going on, some gory stuff. Go I was not expecting it to go this hard. The thing that I think I'm loving the most about this is I think the atmosphere is amazing. I think the writing is amazing for a debut. And I think the atmosphere, this gothic spooky atmosphere is just built so well. Because the writing is so good, like it really just builds up this amazing image, this amazing kind of vibe around everything where you're just, you feel so on edge. You feel so on edge with a character. You don't want her to go back into the house. You don't want her to have to sleep there another night on her own. Like the stakes feel really high. And I mentioned uh, when I first told you about this, the priest, there is a priest who is helping her and there may be a little bit of a romance forming, you know? She doesn't really know her husband. She didn't marry for love. Like they've literally spent like probably a week together in their whole life. So like, there's no qualms about this in my opinion. <laughs> And she's hired this priest who was, he used to live here, but it seems that he was ousted in some way to help her kind of banish whatever the spirit is. And I'm gonna say, this is how you have a romance in a book, but it doesn't detract from the main mystery, the main intrigue of the book. No, you're absolutely right. In Belladonna, even though death and I've even forgot the other guy's name, the other guy in the love triangle were helping her figure out the mystery. It didn't really feel like it. It felt like there was the mystery scenes and the romance scenes and they were very separate. Whereas again, in this book, the priest is helping our main character figure out and try and you know get rid of this spirit, but it feels intertwined with the mystery of the book. It doesn't feel like separate scenes. It feels like, it, like, it was like in Belladonna, she wrote like, this is gonna be a scene where we learn more about the mystery. This is gonna be, be a scene where the romance um, progresses in some way. Whereas I think scenes are better in books when they fulfill more than one purpose. And that's what this does. Any, every time there's a romantic element, it is completely tied back to what is going on with the ghost, essentially. I've read two ghost books though in a row. <laughs> I don't think the three Dahlias is gonna be a ghost, but yeah, no, I'm really enjoying this. I'm really, really enjoying it. I'm intrigued to see where it goes. I don't think it's gonna be a five star, but I do think it's gonna be like a strong four star and I'm excited to read it. So I'm gonna go, do my makeup for the day, get ready, listen to the audiobook whilst I do that. And then I will finish off the book straight after and let you know what I think. Because it's not that long. It's only like 300-ish pages. Um, and the audiobook is really good as well. I'm really enjoying the audiobook. It has two narrators because we sometimes get um, the priest. We sometimes get his perspective as well. So yes, I'm gonna go finish it. Okay, so I just finished The Hacienda 
And I really enjoyed that. It is a four star. Like I predicted, it didn't end up being a four star. Let's start with the positives. So <laughs> I think this is some of my favorite imagery that I've read this year. Like the writing for a debut is so good. The imagery and like the metaphors and just, the, oh, it's so lush and so like thick. And I think that that really lends itself to the book because they're often talking about how the darkness is thick and the air is thick. So just everything feels like overwhelming in a way. So I loved the writing of this. I'm so excited to see what Isabel Kenyas comes out uh, with in the future. Cause I just thought it was so good for a debut. It's one of my, this is probably one of my favorite debuts I read this year. I just thought it was so good. I loved also like the level of horror. <laughs> In this you know I did that video testing out my horror taste this year and I just feel like the level of horror for me is perfect in this like it's serious horror it's not like you know final girl support group where it's kind of like campy horror this is like serious horror but you know it's not like too much for me <laughs> I get you, baby! Oh, okay, so also when I read like haunted house books, I find there's often only like three events, like three or four events where like, this is where the house is haunted, everyone. Look, the house is being haunted. Do you know what I mean? There's only like a few big moments um, of that throughout a book. But this, it's just like bled through everything. And there was a lot, there were a lot of things that happened that were spooky and air, eh, 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 eh. that were spooky and eerie. I meant to say eerie um, and scary. There was a lot of moments of that. It wasn't just like four distinct moments like I often find with books. It was like throughout everything. It was just, it was really good. The only reason I'm giving it a four stars and not a five stars because it didn't feel like a five star. You know when some books you just like, you love it, you don't really have anything to, bad to say about it. I mean, the pacing in this was great. It moved along at a great pace, but I just don't feel like it's a five star. I just, <laughs> I just don't feel like it's a five star. I think perhaps I always felt at a distance from the characters. I never fully got like 100% absorbed in the story. I was always conscious I was reading a book. Do you know what I mean? Whereas a five star for me, I need to just be like enveloped and like everything else goes away. I never felt like that with this. I was constantly aware that I was reading a book and I, as much as I really liked the two main characters who we had the perspectives from, I never like truly felt that I got to know them. But that's something that's really easily fixed past your debut book. I can totally understand why that would be the case. And I still think it was great. So Miko chose well. I've also decided I'm gonna lower my Belladonna rating to two. <laughs> the more that I think about it, it's a two star and I think, Let's not shy away from giving a two star, right? Let me back myself with my chest. So we're now gonna get into the final book, which was chosen by Rora, who's over there sleeping. Hey, queen. <laughs> she chose The Three Dahlias by Katie Watson. I went and had a look on Goodreads. This has only had 170, no, sorry. How many? It was either 127 or 172 uh, ratings. Barely anyone has read this and that makes me so excited to read it. We'll get into the plot when I first check in with you. I just know, it says on the front, it wouldn't be a country house weekend without a little murder. Come on. Like, aren't we all excited? This is what we've all been waiting for. <laughs> yeah, there's a murder at the estate of this old famous English mystery author. And we have got three characters who have played her famous female detective throughout the years for different generations there. And they're gonna team up to solve it. I'm very, 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 very excited. I've got to try and read most of this tonight. It's currently four o'clock. I'm just about to have, or it's almost four o'clock. Um, my Zoom call with my team Royal patrons. This video is going up tomorrow. <laughs> I need to edit some of the video and read this whole book. So it's going to be a little bit of a struggle, but I am so excited to read this. And this is giving me five star energy. So we'll see if Queen Rora wins. Usually she does. <laughs> she's in charge. So I feel like maybe she's chosen the best one. Hey, the cutest cats in the land. How we doing? Um, it's late. Can you tell? When I feel like when it's late, I'm either very low energy or I'm like, I hate myself editing it. Cause I'm like, whoa, whoa. hey kids. <laughs> Anyways, um, goodness, wow, it's just very embarrassing. <laughs> so I am almost hundred pages into the three Dahlias, Dahlias, however you freaking say it. Oh, I just realized the cover has, can you see, has each of them in one of the windows. It's really hard to focus on it. Can you see that though? Anyways, I'm really enjoying this. Okay, let me give you a plot first. So we have this character called Letitia Davenport who wrote this detective called Dahlia Lively in the 1930s up into the 1990s, Agatha Christie, right? Agatha what? 
I'm you. Agatha Christie is referenced in this already because Agatha Christie was the queen of crime, whereas apparently, is it Letitia? No, lettuce. Letice? Lettice? Not lettuce, as in the vegetable. She was the princess of poison. So I feel like we're gonna get some poisoning, which is very exciting. And oh my God, I love this. They've been gathered at the home in which the author lived for like a fan convention <laughs> that is being run. Oh, sorry, I didn't mention they. There's three actresses who have played her throughout their lives. So there's one who was in like three films in the 1980s. There's one who was in like lots of TV series in the early 2000s. And then the current one is one who's gonna be in a new film. She's literally just been cast like a couple of days ago. And they've been gathered at this, the home for this fan convention. It literally, does anyone remember Austin Land, the film Austin Land? If you don't go watch it, it's literally like a work of art. Why didn't it get Oscars? I don't know. But I don't know, it just gives such a fun, vibe to the book from the get-go because it feels like a love letter to murder mystery like you know this is very referential to agatha christie it's very referential to the classic crime era of you know dorothy l sayers um mr anthony berkeley i don't think he wasn't one of the main ones but i re i've read him so that's why i'm referencing him but yeah it just feels like a love letter it feels so fun it's so referential to so many different murder mysteries it's got at the start of every chapter it's got a quote from one of the books that this author has supposedly written and it just makes it feel so whole like it's so fleshed out you know and at the moment there's just been like a fake murder mystery right so there's been like a murder mystery set up for the people there to like play out and it says in the synopsis when fictional death turns into real bodies can the three dahlias find the answers to the murders so the bodies have not arrived yet but i know they're coming and i'm excited excited i'm excited i think we're gonna read from all of the three's perspectives we opened the book with the eldest perspective who's now in her 60s and i loved her perspective but it was only one chapter and then we've been with the youngest one for a good chunk and then i think we're gonna go to the middle one in a second so i, I really like that i am liking the i like multiple perspective stories I think because people think I don't like dual timelines, I don't like multiple perspectives, but I do. If you're telling, I like to be told a cohesive story. That's always my issue. I want my story to be just like, you know, one easy bite. Do you know? <laughs> but the writing is very easy to read. It feels a bit like Thursday Murder Club. I feel like if you enjoy the Thursday Murder Club, you'll enjoy this. It's not quite, it's not like funny or, you know, trying to be humorous like the Thursday Murder Club, but it does give me a similar vibe. I have high hopes for this book and for this series. I just feel like I don't understand why only this only got like a hundred and something ratings and it's been out for like a couple months. So if I love this, I'm making it my life's mission to make people read it. <laughs> Good morning. I am now on page 230-ish. So I've got like about 130 pages left and I'm still really enjoying it. Like this is just such a fun read for someone like me who loves murder mysteries, who loves this whole kind of vibe of like cozy murder mysteries, but with this kind of modern, modern and mainstream slant to it that I feel like the Thursday Murder Club has bought. But what I love about this is that it's different, right? I think I'm just special. Special. I feel like a lot of the cozy murder mysteries uh, that we've seen spring up as a result of the Thursday Murder Club have all been very similar. Right? It's all got, you know, an elderly main character or a group of elderly main characters. That's the main synopsis of them. That's all what they kind of revolve around. But this, you've got those three women who come from different points of life. Yes, one is older, I think she's my maybe mid 60s, but the other one is middle aged and so is dealing with, you know, like stuff like perimenopause is <laughs> mentioned. And then the, the young one is dealing with like, you know, issues you have in your 20s. So I think they're all bringing something uh, really unique to the table. And I, I like that. I like that it's like just not trying to copy something. It is something different. And I think all the three main characters are really fleshed out and have got a lot of like a lot of interesting stuff about them while still being kind of like an archetypal character that you get in murder mysteries. Murder mysteries are always like, characters always fulfill a certain 
purpose or vibe. Like, I feel like I love murder mysteries because characters are always a bit larger than life. <laughs> And like can, they can be afforded to be a bit ridiculous and I enjoy that. I really love the writing. For a debut, I think the writing is really impressive. It's just so, so readable. I'm just really enjoying it. And I think the whole set at a convention for, <laughs> for the, the author and like at the place where she lived and her family still live, I think it's just such an interesting setting and has so much scope for to be so interesting. And it's just making me wanna read Agatha Christie. <laughs> I haven't read a Christie in a while. I've, I've only read Death on the Nile this year. I haven't made progress. I really want to read Perilla Entas, which is the next chronologically in the Poro series that I need to read, but I don't have any plans to read. <laughs> so I don't know, I'll have to shoehorn it in somewhere, but it's making me just appreciate, you know, although it's not Agatha Christie, it is based off Agatha Christie. Like it's just making me appreciate her whole legacy. I think it calls back to her and shows the, influence she's had on the whole murder mystery genre as a whole. So I don't know, I'm really enjoying it. I'm really excited. I'm just gonna go ahead and finish it. I'm hoping the twists at the end are gonna be good because you know, murder mysteries always do kind of like, they can hinge on what the reveal at the end is. And if it's shit, you're like, oh, well. <laughs> I don't know, I haven't really got any theories yet. I think it's doing a really good job of us getting to know the main characters whilst also um, furthering the mystery. So yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and finish it and I will let you know my thoughts when I do. Okay, I finished the three Dahlias! I am so proud of her, I could cry. Finally, I have to like quickly edit this video, <laughs> like the end of this video and get this video up for you. I don't know how late it's gonna be up tonight. But anyways, yeah, I finished the three Dahlias and I'm gonna give it a four star. I loved the reading experience of this. I think it's such a lovely read. I'm really sad it's only got like 170 ratings. I think it deserves so much more than that. So if you like mysteries, if you like the kind of golden age of crime, I would 100% recommend picking this up. You know, the more I think about it, I think I would recommend this to people who love Agatha Christie. It just feels so like, referential and honoring like her style of doing stuff and just you know it's constantly referencing kind of tropes or or events that continued out a book like, like the whole bit at the end where she gathers her suspects together and Paro accuses one of them like it just is referential to all of that so it's not similar in any way to <laughs> Agatha Christie's style of writing or even like quality of plot. That's not shade to this. That's like, you know, I think Agatha Christie, especially for her time, is kind of unparalleled. But, you know, if you love Agatha Christie or the golden age of crime and want to read something modern that's kind of referential to that and just like, you know, appreciating that, then I would recommend picking this up. I think it deserves way more ratings than it currently has. It's like a solid mystery. I had so much fun reading it and I'm really excited to see this as a series with these characters. I think it could work really well as a series and I feel like the author could just grow. I loved the setting. I, I can't go over how much I loved the like location of it being this kind of convention with these super fans. Like I just think it was a very fun take on everything and um, I really felt so absorbed in it. Like uh, different to the Hacienda where I kind of felt always distant from it. I did feel totally absorbed in this book, like totally wrapped up in it. I'm just editing this and I just realized I didn't say why I gave the book a four star and not a five star. And the main reason was that I felt like the who done it was pretty obvious. I knew who it was from probably like the last third of the book. Yeah, I just feel like from then on, like everything that happened at the end of the book didn't need to happen because it was pretty obvious who it was for quite a long time. <laughs> so we could have just wrapped things up a bit quicker. I didn't find it like unsatisfying. I think the who done it made sense within the mystery and was set up well. It was just from a certain point, once you got a certain piece of information, it was really obvious. So yeah, I just feel like with a mystery, if it's that obvious, you cannot give it a five star, but I still did really enjoy it. There we have it. That is the end of this vlog where my cats, aka spooky Halloween pumpkins, <laughs> picked what I read. Lux did not do so well, but Miko and Rora did do well. Even I am begrudged to admit that because Rora just bit my toe. So. <laughs> Yeah, they were both four stars and I'm glad that I've ticked all these books off my list. They were all 2022 releases that I've been really excited to get to. So yeah, I feel like that's a pretty successful vlog even if I didn't have a five star. But alas, thank you for watching this video. If you got into the end, comment the cat or pumpkin emoji down below. Either the cat or pumpkin <laughs> emoji down below if you got into the end. Please let me know what you thought of any of these books or if you're interested in picking any of them up. And I will see you very soon in another video. Bye.